there. I want to first and foremost thank God, and I want to thank for the opportunity for sharing with you, YouTube as an audience, for making this video 10,000 views. And I'm talking about the one that was made in 2019. I have decided to go ahead and do a revision on this. And it was a time capsule. This was before the pandemic. And I had a student at the time, and the student couldn't uh, continue the piano into the fall season being a football player. And so what he did was he was learning from some of the videos I was sending on the phone text, and it just didn't have enough room. And I finally started using YouTube to send just little tutorials, really just to one student. And then this whole thing is really taken off. So I just wanted to take this moment to thank you. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for showing up here today and I want to thank YouTube as an audience because this video is a revision of one that was from a few years back that had enough views on it that I wanted to go ahead and redo it and make it a little bit more clear just a little bit more clarity so we're going to do the same thing we're going to start with an A minor 7 I'm going to point to the notes as the roots and the bass so the root defines a chord you're going to see a green note pop up on the computer monitor and this particular note right here, middle C, has a C4. Don't worry, no explosives. Um, that's just going to be C4. That means it's four notes, uh, four octaves up from the very bottom of the piano keyboard, C4. And on the Roland piano, there it is right there, right next to the reader, the uh, digital readout. So here we go. Let's talk that out. I have a root A in the bass, minor third. Put a fifth there. I'm going to put a seventh. Some people ask, well, why do we throw these numbers out there? If I play an A minor scale, two, three, there's a third, four, five, there's a fifth, there's a seventh. That's an octave, and that's a nine. Now, down here, it was a two. Anyways. Nine and a two are the same note, just an octave apart. Let's move on. Only move your middle finger in your right hand to F sharp. Okay. I'm going to do that movement again. Really subtle movement. I'm just going. Everything else stays the same up here in the right hand. Some people will have fun with that. Digress. So going back to our two five one progression. Okay, that's what it's going to look like, and that's a two five one in the key of G. We're going to do a two five one in the key of F as we continue around the circle of fifths. I'm going to make this G major seven a minor seven, and to do that, I'm going to flat the third. There's a flat third. There's a fifth, and I'm going from the reference point of G on the bottom. Th flat third, fifth, dominant seven, nine. That's nine is in the number nine, not nine is in no in the uh, German language. I'm not trying to be funny. If I was trying to be funny, it probably didn't work. So this is my C13, okay? And I wanna stress that point, you're just moving one note. Okay. When you're going from a, 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 a dominant seven to a, uh, a five seven, a minor seven to a five seven. Okay, so okay, and then I'm going to go to the one, which is our F major seven. Now, I believe in the first video I did of this, I added some 11s, which may not have been the greatest idea for beginners. So I'm not going to do the 11 right now. I'm just going to play the nuts and bolts, minor third, fifth, seventh, ninth. If you want to do the 11, it's this one right here. 
why is that an 11? Well, if we play an F minor scale, there's 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's your minor 11. Down here, we're going to put it right below a middle C. That's the 11. Okay, let's keep moving here. The next key that we're going to go into is E flat. Okay, I jumped over that a little quickly. We did a uh, B flat 13 in there. Now keep in mind, if you keep these with the 11th on the B flat, which is, then that's an A flat over B flat. Really nice gospel kind of sound. Anyways, we're going to this key right now. We don't want to get carried away. So let's keep going around the circle of fifths. We're in D flat right now, okay? Some people call it C sharp. Obviously, you're going to call it whatever it calls for. There might be a certain classical piece that has a C sharp, you know. So Beethoven would put C sharp as the label of that. He could have simply called it D flat uh, Moonlight Sonata 2, but there are reasons why C sharp works better in that context. Let's move forward here around the circle of fifths. So here is a D flat in the bass. I'm going to. Spell a minor seven, so minor third, fifth, seventh, ninth. What I'm going to do is take the third and the fifth and throw them up here. You see that? I went from there to there, and it gives me this. In other words, this chord moving these these two notes up an octave gives me this. I'm going to do it one last time. Okay, so that's a minor seven. Okay, and then I'm going to go to G flat in the bass. This time I'm moving only my thumb and my right hand. Okay, and now here's my B flat. Uh, excuse me, B major seven. Okay, it's a nice chord. It's all it's all uh, all black keys. You can do one of those. Okay, I'm going to do the same voicing in terms of uh, seventh being on the bottom for a, a B minor seven. Okay, and then I'm only going to move my thumb in my right hand. Okay, that's an E dominant seven. We can call it E13. You could also have it up here. I like it down here. So keep in mind when you're doing these, it tends to sound good as you gravitate around middle C, okay? So as you go through these, you can, you can start... You can start doing that kind of stuff, and we'll talk about that in another video, okay? We've gone through half of the circle of fifths. Let's go ahead and talk about the other half of the circle of fifths. In the first video series I did on this, I went to A flat, because that's going to give me the other side of the coin or the other side of the circle of fifths. Okay, so A flat. Why the circle of fifths to practice two, five, one chord progressions? The answer is found in the order of the sequence of the notes. Clockwise, the circle is a series of ascending fifths. Counterclockwise, the circle is a series of descending fifths. Or ascending force. It is 100% accurate to say that a 2 5 1 chord progression is precisely 25% of the chord cycle of the circle of fifths. In other words, a 2 5 1 in the key of C incorporates D, G, and C. One can visually see the sequence that takes 25% of the circle. This 2 5 1 in B flat allows us to see the circle as a continuous cycle of this renowned chord progression. 
And starting in the key of C, notice how the tonic for each 251 spells out a whole tone scale as it goes through a complete cycle. Consequently, the exact pattern of the whole tone scale takes place, this time starting on G or F or any of the six notes in this half. So a lot of the world's greatest music, in my opinion, is made on these keys. You know? So you can do all kinds of stuff. When you do a 2-5-1 in that key, it's bringing you to G-flat major. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. So there's all kinds of shapes that are here. And Go and just create with this stuff. Don't don't follow everybody to a T. Try to find your own variations. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do, and you know, switch up the key signature. Just have fun with it. Just have fun with it.